Welcome to episode 15 of Into the Foxhole. Get chilling with your boy here, Ed. It's your boy Craig, though. Oh yeah. We're here. <laughs> 2016. We're here. 2016. Hope y'all had a happy new year. And that is the factual year for real. Oh, that is. <laughs> yes, hope you guys. I hate you. <laughs> uh, hope you guys had, you know, a new year. Uh, we out here chilling a good New Year's Eve. Y'all didn't get shot, do nothing wild, nothing like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I mean, um, because we need you here to listen to us. So last year, mega, 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 mega year in gaming in the history books is one of the fucking biggest years in gaming. I would say biggest news year of gaming of all time. This yeah, is one of those fucking, fucking years huge. where it's going to live in infamy in terms of ridiculous announcements and ridiculous <laughs> changes and all this crazy shit that happened. <laughs> Almost more so in announcements than the fact actual games themselves. Oh, it's still got some not, not, to not, say, not to say that those we games weren't amazing. Let's say last year had like great we games, got more but like games. we got a lot of crazy shit announced this we year. We got more games than I could finish. You are talking about. Just Cause 3, Mad Max, Metal Gear Solid 5. Nah, uh, you're right though, you're right though. Bloodborne, Dying Light, Battlefront, all the Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty that come every single time anyway. But, <laughs> we're going to focus on just one, one genre of games today. Oh, that yes. That has oh, megaton yes. amount oh, yes. of fucking games oh, coming yes. out this year. Oh, God. And that, of course, being one of our favorites, the RPGs. It's the RPGs, y'all. So we're going to talk about um, our favorite RPGs that are going to be coming out 2016. Um, only because, I mean, yeah, there are, 2016 is essentially a murder 2016. It, it, it seems like it, the year of the it, RPGs. It basically, it basically baby rapes. The next previous year, baby and, rapes. and I say that even with Metal Gear release. Like if you don't understand the term baby, baby rape, rapes, baby it's like, rape. you were like imagine about, being raped, but like in the gentlest way possible. <laughs> I'm just saying. How does that describe what <laughs> you, you are talking about? You talking baby rape? Sort of <laughs> it's like you were talking about the sexual assault of a child to describe the excitement of games. I was like, yeah, so what, correct? Right <laughs> um, In the gentlest of possible oh, manners. Yeah. So, like, this, this, this year is huge. This year yes, is really, really, absolutely. really, really, really fucking huge. You're talking about Mass Effect, Final Fantasy, Persona 5. You're talking about Horizon Zero Dawn, The Last Guardian. You're talking about ReCore possibly being this year. Bullshit probably isn't. So, it's you're talking about... <laughs> A lot. You're talking about you know, Gears, of Gears of War 4, possibly Resident Evil 7 getting announced. I mean, come on. You are talking about a pretty fat fucking year like, in terms of huge fat, games. Like, mm. We are only talking about RPGs, and I can tell you right now, the like, list that we are looking at thick, before us is me deep. Thick penis it, in that baby <laughs> just... <laughs> Good God. I'm like, damn, Greg. <laughs> I'm like, damn, Greg. I, I might have stated it, but... The girth. <laughs> the girth of the amount of games coming out this year is so massive. Like, let me describe to you. The baby rape is so massive. The girth of this baby rape is so offensive. <laughs> this, year, this year is so offensive. So, for, so, so this, this, <laughs> this podcast is going to get a little more offensive. Absolutely, we're right. we are setting the tone. We are going deep. We are setting the tone for the podcast. Being like, 2016. This is 2016, 2016 Foxhole it, it, in your face it, right it, now. It this is, is what it's going to be about. We, we ain't put, about to get the fuck out. We put that mature rating on there. We need to put two mature <laughs> ratings on there. One wasn't enough. So it's like, so episode 15, Into the Foxhole. We're going to start off on our <laughs> RPGs of 2016. Yes, absolutely. Okay. What the title that needs to start it off. It's easily, hands down, no comparison, the biggest JRPG to release, if not this year, in the last 10 years. Absolutely. Final Fantasy 15, oh. formerly Final Fantasy 13 versus formerly whatever they wanted to be like doing it prior. Oh, that's cute. Final Fantasy 15 it was episode 15. It's episode 15. Nice. Final Fantasy 15 needs to start off. We need to start off with the biggest megaton here. Absolutely. Final Fantasy 15, you know, releasing okay. this year. When? Okay, okay. We know it's not spring, clearly. We I already mean, spring. I mean, obviously you guys have been listening to me 
and Edwin through these past 15 podcasts because I expect nothing less of you. But if you have been listening to us for the past 15 podcasts, you know how much I love myself some Final Fantasy. So to say that Final Fantasy 15 is the biggest our JRPG to come out in the past 10 years is an understatement to it me, especially to me. Enormous. It is going to be the pinnacle of this year. And most, it's just what it is. Most like, people, this year to me is going to be defined yes. as the year of Final Fantasy 15. Well, this is one of these games where it's like, I know I know people may have some, you know, they, they might still have, uh, you know, a bad taste in their mouth in Final Fantasy thirteen. Oh, don't disagree. Uh, 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 people are going uh, to not be right about People are going to feel raw about Final Fantasy, you know, thirteen, uh, And that's fine. But as the they reality should. As is, they should. As they should. As they should. But the reality is, Final Fantasy fifteen is essentially saying, here you are. Bringing <laughs> I'm back, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So here they are bringing back the open world concept. And I, I would like to bring up a, an idea that we've talked about regarding Final Fantasy seven. It's actually an idea we've talked about regarding Battlefront. It's actually an idea we've talked we talked about regarding lots of games. And it's the idea of people asking for specific things that were in the older games in a newer format with not really respecting the magnitude in which they're asking for these specific things. Now, consider Final Fantasy 13 Versus, or what it was called 13 Versus, was essentially being made in 2005. Yes. So if they're making it 2005... You know, they showed it off, you know, a year or two after the fact. And, you know, they're telling you it's going to have uh, airships in it. They're telling you it's going to be open world. They're sort of telling you all these great things about this game that sort of meet our criteria of what we remembered from, I would say, Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9. Yes. We remember those Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9. That is a difficult thing to essentially translate uh, the way people think it could be translated. Final Fantasy VII, me and Craig always say this all the time, it's a masterpiece game because you're Absolutely. not just talking about a RPG. You're talking about the first 3D major game that Square had made, and it tops its other games. Not only yes. does it have bar for bar it the takes, same features, makes it still open exactly. world, it takes it, still has an airship, it takes my god. Everything that you knew from the previous Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. whether it be 6, 4... Three, two, one takes everything that you know from those games, puts it in this 3D world, and just makes it bigger yes. and better, and which is exactly what a sequel should be doing. Yes, and, and especially that, when you're moving consoles. Exactly, exactly. And it's like going from sprite based to 3D, in my opinion, Final Fantasy VII easily is a title that truthfully should have never even been made. Yes. In the technical understanding, what like, you asked Square like, to amazing. do is something I'm still shocked to this day they were able to do. It's amazing. Playing that, replaying that game, especially since they re-released it on the PSN, mm-hmm. playing that game again, it's amazing to me how huge that game is. Like, how big of a scope that story is, how big of a world that you're participating in. It's just mind-blowing. It's, it's, the fact that this game came out in 1997. Yeah, it was and there are plenty of game, There are plenty of RPGs that we consider good. Mm-hmm. There are plenty of RPGs out there that we consider good RPGs. That a lot of people consider like <laughs> Mass Effect. We consider great RPGs that just don't <laughs> come to this standard. No, it's like... Especially, I cannot stress... Enough about the time that the game was made. Yes. It's the idea that... And this is something that's difficult for for anyone to really explain. Because we've never had a jump between completely different mediums. Yes. It's the medium of sprite-based to 3D. And then from the jump from sprite-based to 3D, something the team never fucking did before. Mm-hmm. They're now making it bigger, equal, and having all the other same things that you came accustomed to with Final Fantasy you know, exactly. 6 and 5. So what you're now asking of Square when you jump into the next generation with Final Fantasy X and all these other games is you're asking them to make that same leap again and continue and to make that same leap. To That's be fair, hard to do. To be fair, the Final Fantasy X, as much as I love that game, as much as I feel that that game is a masterpiece, it did not make that jump the same way no, Final Fantasy like, 7 did to Final Fantasy I'm, 6. I'm okay with, with how Final Fantasy 10 is made. Oh, absolutely. I'm fine with Again, that. Final Fantasy 10 is still one of my favorite That's games of all time, if not my most favorite, favorite game of all time. The format in which they made 10, which I still like, is that it's like it just goes down the linear path. 
But at the same time, it's like you had the airship that lets you still go back yes. to those specific areas. So it wasn't And it 100%. made a difference whether or not you did go back or Yeah, not. and it's like, well, that game released within one year of, of the system coming out. So that game, excuse me, around two years of PlayStation 2 coming out. Yes. So PlayStation 2 comes out you know, That's early 2000, yeah, and this comes out ending of 2001. So it came out in a very fast time. 10 didn't come out that way, and neither is 15. None of those games are coming out like lightning, second year, you know, yes. here you are. So it's like, it's like they had to take the time to craft those things but clearly, with wanting to release a game in that time frame, they were unable to. With seeing what they're trying to do with Final Fantasy, Fantasy 15, you would have to consider to make a game to the standard of open world, airship, but just in 3D, in such in what we regard as AAA high detail development, this has taken these dudes 10 years to even get close to it. Absolutely. So that's saying something. I think it's trying to say... Though we don't like the way they did 13, we have to understand that Final Fantasy 15, Final Fantasy Versus, that did not just get created last year or two years ago. This was over the course of a decade yes. that they've been trying to figure out how to get this concept to work correctly in 3D, clearly without bankrupting the entire company. So I, I, believe... I, wonder, I wonder if Final Fantasy 13 had any say in the matter, like the way it, it, it's, it's, um, like design. Pu it's, it's, it's public response. Like, they, like, <laughs> Like, owner of public response like like oh man we could release Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen but I don't know like I, 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 I we could hold it back and try I, to I make it. I feel game. because of its concept, in my opinion, I feel it's like Thirteen had to be something that was released then and there for them, and it's like only if anything to fund the the conceptual idea of what they are trying to make with Final Fantasy Thirteen Versus. Though what they're trying to make with Thirteen Versus is just simply okay, open world. Here's an airship. It's to such a huge degree. We don't know what else they're gonna do. Whether it's gonna be land, air, sea. Yeah. We don't know how many cities those go. We don't really know to the magnitude that they're trying to make it. But Absolutely. what we do know is that they were making it to the magnitude that we were used to RPGs like Final Fantasy, let's say six or five. Final Fantasy six or five, it's like had these huge worlds that you could go and enter, and it's like six continues, seven continues, eight continues, nine continues, and you get that halted with ten and twelve and thirteen. So it's clear that they hit something that didn't allow them to do those same things graphically. Yes. They're now more; they cannot reach up to the max graphical fidelity. When you look at Final Fantasy uh, seven, eight, and nine, it's clear that they they get better at their technique of making models. Clearly, yes. So when you get to Final Fantasy eight and nine, Final Fantasy eight and nine graphically stand toe to toe with with, with Metal Gear, with Tekken, with all the other PlayStation Absolutely. One games at that time. Final Fantasy X or XII do not stand against the best looking PlayStation 2 games. So it's going to show you, even to make what they were doing, they had a limit. They could only really kind of push that type of processing power before they begin to get halted by what they really could do in terms of technical limitations. So what I'm saying is that they reached what they could do and Final Fantasy XV is now essentially going to be the first Final Fantasy that we've ever gotten that's like a sequel to Final Fantasy IX in some respect, conceptually. It's like it's saying it's a sequel to seven. It's like it's saying it's the it's the game that is being what six was, that allowed what seven to be what it is until we got to ten and thirteen and twelve. That's right. what it's like saying this is. That's why I feel it's the biggest uh, RPG or Final Fantasy going to be released in ten years easily because it is bringing all those concepts back. It just sad that it took this long, but it's still it bringing is it back. Sad, it is sad that it took this long, but I mean. Final Fantasy is just one of those, one of those IPs that can just stand the test of time. It just, it is, it's so ingrained in fandom oh, that it, it's hard to erase, even if they do have some blemishes on their record. Yeah, because it's like you see every other Final Fantasy just new series. Exactly. So it's like it, exactly. Really... So like, like, it's been like, it's it's had that benefit from its onset. So it's allowed to do these things. It's allowed to experiment. Oh yeah. But at the same time, like, yeah, you know, like, the world's been waiting for a good Final oh, Fantasy for a oh very long Lord. time. Granted, I, like, I know... We want this game. I, I love Ten. Game. Ten is easily one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> and there are people who actually enjoyed Twelve for its gameplay. And I, I, I understand that. And I understand game. that. But, like, besides felt, that... Felt right. I'm going to, like, be blatant. Besides that, like, we haven't seen a good Final Fantasy since then. Agreed. Like, Agreed. Twelve... Twelve was such a deviation that like it was like it it threw a lot of people off and it became something else. But now like 
Final, even though Final Fantasy XV is is still a different game, it's not necessarily your turn base that you're used to. It's not exactly your ATB that you're used to. Mm-hmm. It still feels like a Final Fantasy game, and it's like design and it's just an overall feel that like it feels like we're back type of shit. And it's just like, oh my god, this is so exciting! Like I can't. I'm happy. I, I, I like I like that they're going back to this older concept, but it's like they've been trying to do this for ten years now. And it's kind of like cool to see the labor of love in what even they put then, into like, the series, like finally coming out. Yeah, sure, it's been time. like ten years, but like also like this is like the first Final Fantasy game that like a mainstay Final Fantasy director has been behind. Oh <laughs> yeah, because like let's let's be honest, like, even Final Fantasy X like was mm-hmm. a newbie. Mm-hmm. And granted, that game was again that game was fantastic. I can't say that another game's fantastic. But Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy XII, I mean, and all the Final Fantasy XIII's yeah. were all done by, the by a new developer, but by it's, a new I director. Mean, it's, you, you still have, um, you still essentially still have um, Final Fantasy XV. So my understanding conceptually is still from the, what Nomura originally yeah, directed. Yeah, it's Nomura's game still. Yeah, I, I, st- I feel... Which is why I say like it's the first one directed by a Final Fantasy mainstay. Oh, yeah, just new to the series in general in terms Absolutely. of the direct, directorial new. Exactly. Um, which I agree. I think it's, it still needs, like, somebody who's, like, directed a good Final Fantasy before. I think they just might be keeping this new dude over who did, like, um, Agito and did, like, Type-0. I think they're just taking this, like, dude over, essentially, because they allowed Nomura to work on... I mean, Nomura needs to deal with the shit because Nomura, is, 3. because Nomura needs to save this company. Yeah, it's like... He, he, you know, he's <laughs> Nomura needs to do, like... <laughs> Nomura needs to make Final Fantasy VII. Nomura needs to make fucking Kingdom Hearts three. Pretty he much, has, he has shit much, to do. Pretty much. So, I mean, like... I, but, like, basically, it's still Nomura's design. Yeah. Like, it's Nomura's game. Like, I, I still see Final Fantasy XV as Nomura's game. Even though he didn't see it to completion, yes. it's still Nomura's game. Because from what I've heard is that the concept is still his. Even the writer who's wrote the game has stated that he was okay with the removal of said character. Uh-huh. And like what oh, I... Oh, God. I'm, I'm still upset about it, but uh-huh. I'll, I'll wait I'll wait to see. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm happy Stella's gone. Should, they fuck should, you, though. They should have killed that Oh, my bitch God. I'm about to pause this podcast shit. so I can slap the shit out of you. <laughs> They should have killed that bitch when they had a <laughs> chance. I, I'll, I'll reserve my opinions until the game comes I'm out, but I'm savage. whatever. Savage. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I feel like I'm okay with the removal of her character uh, for 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 design purposes. If like, we don't really know if her character is going to be popping yes. off, we don't Again. really know why her character is moving. If, like, if the original person who writes the game is telling you like, "Hey, I actually don't care," and I actually was okay with this being yeah, happened, best, I think that's. Still fine. Then. At best, I can say I'm. am d- just disappointed because I like the way it was going. But if, if, if the writer, yeah, wanna... if the writer says that the story can still hold true without having this character, mm-hmm. then I always say like my whole writing philosophy. If I ever write anything, less is more. Always. So if you feel that the removal of this character strengthens the plot, then fucking go for it. But yeah, again, like to me, I'm still a little disappointed because I like I. It, from what I thought was going to happen, I liked having this character From what there. I thought was going to happen, I didn't like her. I thought she was a Jew. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Wow. We, wow. Just said that, we just said in this podcast off with so many <laughs> things. 2016 is going to be a good year. Uh, yeah. I didn't like her If that's how it is, that's how it is. Whatever. Again, I'll hold my reserves until they, I actually I mean, experience the I mean, story. I like they're, still, they're still mechs in the game. They're, they're still, they're still, still, they're still, still, like, they're still the whole bromance between the yes. four dudes. Like, I, I get that. Stuff. There's still I get that. And I, I like, to me, to me, friendship yeah, holds I mean, just as much weight as, like, a love interest. Does it really? To me, so, like, if you have, like, Four homeboys traveling the world trying to do all their crazy I mean, antics. We, we it holds that. just we, as much as we, like we, always, a man and woman. But do. We always get that so much. We get that to the point where it's but like, like it, it we feels get, like we get the we, romance more than the we, fucking romance. I don't know if we do. I, I feel like I, with, I feel like with Final Fantasy 15, like Final Fantasy 15, I, I love what they're doing conceptually in terms of the design and the gameplay and the open worldness and the exploration. I love all that. The only issue that I, I essentially have is like. I feel the story in regarding the bromance. It feels like it's like those teachers that you get the fucking binders with, and they're like, "Oh man, you're this is our class, so you're gonna get that one binder from my one class." No, you're right. Never mind. I don't got four of the classes though. Well, let's just get three binders for your class, bitch. This is yeah. what it feels like with this that they feel like they are the only ones that done the. 
friendship thing. And they're like, see, man, we have this idea for a JRPG that's about friendship. Wow, tell me about it. Because we've see, never had one like, of those before. But like, the way I see it, like I feel like Bro, they're taking man. a little a little more of a mature... Are they? Well, I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. But like, I will say that like, from what I've seen from like demos and shit, like, if they're doing the whole friendship angle, it's the way I would like to see it. In the fact that it's not like, oh man, I believe in the power of friendship. We've and had the, this before. And friendship is going to over, like, basically every Tales game <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> the power of friendship is going to get me through. And I because I believe means. in my friends, it's going to... I gonna, hope that's what the ending is. Like, right? if, like oh, I believe in the power of my friends. My friends make me strong. Oh, no, but yeah, it's just I like... I hope that's what it is, like, what it needs, sounding like that. What it needs to be is just like, yeah, it's just like... These four guys get together and just be, because they're friends, they just help each other out. Not necessarily it makes them stronger, but because they're together, like, they will do anything for each other. That's what it should be. But again, I have no fucking clue, and I'm sure I'll do a story review of it when it comes out. But, like, it's just... <laughs> yes, the whole friendship thing has been done before, but how many times have we seen like the whole romantic thing done? Like uh, the whole man loves woman and does anything to save I woman. I will say the love story is the rare story. What? Friendship is what? Ma- Mass Effect. That nigga's friends with everyone. What? Right there. Mass Effect. He's uh, like, what's what's the name of that pilot, dude? Oh, um... Mass Effect. Fucking I was guy with the bad legs. Seth Green. Seth Green, yeah. <laughs> Seth, we'll call him Seth Green. Right, Seth Green yeah, name. Seth Green. He's like, man, Shepard, we're friends. He's like, yeah, I wouldn't want anybody else commanding Normandy but you. And he's like, oh, that's gay. That's gay, bro. No. <laughs> but, like, no, but, see, like, but besides that, there's so many RBGs hey, where it's like... I love you. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, it's, just, it's I, everywhere. I, there are, but I would say both of them have their high it's degrees. It's everywhere. Final Fantasy Eight, Final Fantasy, not Final Fantasy Ten. Final, uh, like, go to hell. Final <laughs> they're all love stories. Yeah, like, there's so hell. many love stories in RPGs. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Go all on. the go even, to hell. even all the fucking Tales games that are like, uh-huh. even though there's the whole like, oh man, I believe in the power of friendship. The one woman that he's in love with just supplies so much more power because I'm in love with her Damn. because we have this superficial relationship. Damn. Because I'm just saying, <laughs> I've played RPGs, man. Don't test me. <laughs> so Do not test me. What, Tales what? of Symphonia. Uh, you, Tales of Vesperia. Horrible games. Oh, like, horrible oh, games. Vesperia was a good game. I will say Vesperia was a good game. <laughs> nah. But uh, uh, that same problem still. So, Still happens. It's just there. In, ter- like, in terms of um, in terms of old school combat, in terms of old school concept, Final Fantasy action coming with Final Fantasy fifteen. What is the most exciting thing you are looking forward to in Final Fantasy fifteen? Oh, that's a that's a great question. How do you feel was sorely lacking from the game? Sorely lacking from like the series or like. I'll like, take I'll take the series from the series. Like what I'm excited for is just because again. Again, I'm looking at games like Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, and Final Fantasy X, all being complete love stories. Because mm-hmm. you know I me, mean, man. I, I, I dig my stories, man. No matter what game it is, I want, I want my story to be pronounced. And from what I see, this story seems to be very Shakespearean. I hope it's gay. <laughs> the story seem, even though the story seems to be very Shakespearean-inspired, and that's fine if you do it right. Oh, we already know how this story's going on. Yeah, the story's Ooh. very shakespearean I can but say, at the I, same see, time, I, I see this entire it's, it's story down exactly the way. It, it seems very Romeo and Juliet, especially with the character Ooh. Stella involved. But even with the even with the character Stella removed, it still seems very Romeo and Juliet. There's a main, the main, but like at the same time, like I don't mind that, and I want to see a really, I just, I just want a really good story again. Because I've seen thirteen and all its I mean, incarnations. This, this one, this one, in my opinion, by default, seems like it's a better story. Simply Absolutely, because it's not. One but like, it's not. Thing is, it's not. One, it's a better story because it's not thirteen. Yes, I mean, like, it's, it's hard not to be a better story yes, than thirteen. I, mean, I, I think it's also a better story because unlike thirteen and twelve, it doesn't rely too deeply on political stuff happening. Yes, all you really, uh, all you, see, from, from what I've seen a, from the dawn. See, you, you the fucking Dawn nailed it. No, dude. From, fucking the Dawn, nailed it. From, from the Dawn trailer, it's like, from what I've seen, it's like, okay, it's about two kingdoms. 
this bitch kingdom owns this man, or this man's kingdom owns her kingdom, and they treat her people like shit. See, and that's, and that's really all you really need to know. This guy's an asshole. He's a dick. You know, and, and that's fine. That's See, all you really need to know. And the prob- I, I, I hope that and the they problem just is, flush that out. And the problem with twelve and stuff. thirteen is that they focus so much on the politics they, and the they world. They focus so much on it to the point where it's like, consider there's most... So much, this, especially in 13. In 12, it was all about politics. In 13, it was all about the world. And the problem with that is, when you're telling a story, you don't tell a story about a world, you tell a story about a character existing in this world. Mm-hmm. So you can explain all you want about the world, but at the end of the day, the story needs to be about the fucking character. And 13 doesn't do that. They don't 13 care. is literally just about like, oh man, Lucies, Falsies, oh, fucking like, blah, 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 focuses. I don't want to All this it, crazy man. shit is happening. You don't, scary. And you don't give a fuck about anybody who's going through any of the shit that's happening. Oh, yeah. Whereas 12 is just all about the politics and like all the shit that's going on in the world, which is <laughs> interesting. Yeah, but then at the same time, you don't give a fuck about no, the people it's living like, in it. Con- consider. Con- consider. The reason why one of the greatest worlds ever created in gaming, Metal Gear Solid, yes. it, it, it gets a lot of its like oomph of interesting stuff because it is historical fiction. Yes, in the, respect, the same in time, the respect that you give a fuck of how Snake is interacting yeah, with that it's, historical it's, it's fiction. It's different because we we know the world, we know how political things work. These countries exist in real life, mm-hmm. and even though it's an completely clearly an alternate history, it's a it's of a, it's a history that we understand. And we don't need them to tell us how the real war turned out. We know exactly. how the war turned out, and even like. Even to like a, a better extent, like to like to more closely integrated with the actual franchise, Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X, they, they, they go they go very far to explain you how this world works. Yeah, it, it's how like how ten, what ten what you need to do to fucking defeat sin. Yeah, but at the same time, you can you're concerned about you're concerned about the fact that you, I don't want to like I feel I feel weird. Like, should I spoil this game? Like, I don't yes. know if I should spoil this. It is too old. All right, it is it's old. You have plenty. Oh, of... excuse me. It's going to be sixteen years. All right, old, so like, Greg. all right, so this spoiler world. alert. I will, I will say spoiler alert just in case you do want to like play this game. Give I it like, I don't give a. I'm fuck. not going to talk too long about. It, so like, skip like five I'm minutes ahead. Savage. But like in Final Fantasy X, it's like you care that Yuna's. You don't care the fact that like you know. Yuna's going throughout this pilgrimage and she needs to like get all these summons to defeat Sin. What you care about is the fact that when she defeats Sin, she's gonna die. Thank you. And you care about the fact that Titus cares that she's gonna die Thank and he you. wants to do everything that he can to save her. The, the so nar- you care it's about the characters yes, like and the, not about the fact the, the world that they live no, in. It's like the, the the narrative of Final Fantasy X, which makes a lot of sense. Is that the only political thing that they even waste the time with, with like Seymour like owning all spear and shit? Yeah. It's just him having this whole political thing of wanting Yuna and not really giving a fuck whether and she's even then, that, or not. That, that, that delves into the character relations because at first it's like, it just comes down to like, damn, Titus likes Yuna and this fucking Seymour cat's like messing it on his game and well, shit. Yeah, like, man, I got, no, that's my fucking girl the, and the, shit. The it's just so happy that he just turns out to be evil. So like, yeah, I want to fucking kill him, but he's also trying to take my girl. I, the, the, the greatest thing that I that I actually do like about the, the narrative between that is that for, if Seymour essentially stays with Yuna and nobody brings up this marriage thing, Yuna essentially lives. But that's, well, a whole yeah, bunch exactly, of people get we fucked don't over. Want that to happen. Yeah, but a whole bunch of people get fucked over by sin. So it's like Seymour could care less because he's still going to be with Yuna. Mm-hmm. So all the lesser people get fucked over by sin. Seymour lives and he has his wife. But it's like it's interesting because it's like basically Titus's entire goal in doing this is essentially to get the person he, he likes Yuna. to die to essentially yeah. save everyone else, even with the understanding that like you know. He won't have her. It, it's, a, it's a sad. So, it's a sad story, and it's it, a fucking. It is. But it's but a it, sad it, story in the fact that it impacts the character itself, and not necessarily the yeah, world itself. It's, it, it is. And it Whereas makes a in good twelve narrative. and thirteen, it's just like, sure, all these bad things are happening, but it affects the world, and not necessarily their character. Yeah, it's like they don't. They don't. They don't oh, talk. God, about, I want to talk about thir- like I want a podcast about thirteen, 13 so bad. I will kill you. I want to talk 13, about everything dude. wrong with thirteen so bad. It's a horrible game. It but is it's a like, horrible game. It, it's like. When you have stories that are like that and they're too deeply based on the political things that are happening, we have trouble understanding our own political world as it is. <laughs> and the issue that I have is that when you have titles that have been more successful at creating such narratives like Metal Gear, they get their success uh, essentially due 
to having it off of an existing universe. Mm -hmm. So because it's off of an existing universe like our own, and it is essentially a play on that universe, we understand who the presidents were. We understand the wars that got... It's easier because you're telling us something we already understand or know. To some regard, we already know. So it's like, to try to sit there and say, oh, well, we're going to teach you how this system is. Oh my God, here are these judges. Here are these other people. La Siege. When you're going yeah. down here and you're trying to reteach somebody all these political understandings and how the world works to try to make a story make sense out of it, you're going way too far to exactly. explain Which something that they hard. won't really get to do. So I personally feel that they didn't need to go that deep into it. I feel especially that it could, it could, especially like 13 and 12, they kind of really changed those things to make them make mm. more sense. I felt overall they're bad stories. What I'm very interested yes. in in terms of 15 is that 15 story is seems on the outset that it is more straightforward. Yes, it that seems it simple is, enough. It is about here's my guy, there's his dad, and there's this girl, and there's her family. There's an evil family that runs yeah. things, and there's another family. <laughs> there's that a runs family that has Matt, and a family that don't have Matt, and they exactly. don't like each other. Pretty much, that's Go. all you know. <laughs> it's like, and I'm fine with what that is because it's not trying to get into this word convoluted mess. Yes. Now, I would say the thing I'm excited about the most, Final Fantasy 15, it has to be the open world cities and the nature of exploration you're going to well, have. That's just because we're two different people. It was a you. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited about the story. But it's like, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm more so no, excited, I'm excited about, about the that stuff that happens outside. I'm excited about that shit too, but I'm more excited about the story. Like your like. self-created narrative. I love the idea, like we always talked about this in RPGs, yes. the setup before the battle. The idea that you could go to your shop and get all your gear and do all the stuff you're going to do. All these things tell a story to yourself in terms of what's going to be happening. And I just want to be able to go to those cities, go to those towns for certain reasons or certain purposes. Like let's say you're driving on the road and you're running out of mana, you're running out of something, because this car got to run something, bro. All right, so if you're, if you're driving on the road and you need to go to a gas station or you could get some XP or get whatever the fuck your elixirs or whatever the fuck you're going to get at these gas stations and these stores, drive by the store, you get whatever you're going to get. In the same respect, in an airship, you might stop by a town to get a specific thing. You could kind of do this on these gas stations that they now essentially have scattered across this world. I like the idea that that's telling that small narrative to within the gamer itself that I went here to do the specific thing. You may do that. You may pass that gas station. You may not have anything to do with that. But in my mind, I am playing the role and I'm playing them. And they went on this trip, ran out of gas. They went in the gas station, bought the elixir. That tells me a story in my mind. Right. I'm actually more so looking forward to those sort of um, intimate moments by yourself of playing the game without sure. the narrative telling it for you to sort of role play yourself Fair. to do those things in your mind. So, Fair. Um, I mean... It, it, <laughs> It's two different viewpoints, but I mean... I'm not killing you. No, uh, so I'm excited about 15, nonetheless. Yes, um, we should we, move on. We should definitely move on. Go down the list of some of our most excited RPGs coming. This one, we have to do next, simply because it is the top, it is the Final Fantasy killer. It is the RPG that's seeking throne in terms Say of popularity. It. Say it so I can start... Doing like, my I'm thing. Gonna kill you. I can start messing my pants. You ah. can say it. <laughs> Persona Five. Oh my god. Coming out summer this year. Oh my Soon. God. Greg. Six months, Craig. I'm rating. Soon. Like, so we are mm. easily, 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 easily one of the biggest disappointments because last year was the game getting Absolutely. delayed. I've been Ooh. waiting I've been waiting for fucking we years for this game. We I can't. are very hyped. I so can't. it's like uh, we we didn't get as much new information. Um you know thing is, this is one of those games like Final Fantasy, like they've been disappointing me for like several years now. Uh-huh. So like this kind of game, like I need information. Mm-hmm. I need to know like what you're doing, how these things are gonna work. Persona, man, mm-hmm. you show me that fucking trailer, and I'm already there. Pants like I'm, I'm done. Tight. Like Persona, you are like game set match. I would say sixty dollars oh, yeah, out the fucking window. Happened. Like I've already say. invested this shit. Like it's in a, it's in like my long term budgeting. Oh uh, yeah. Like there's like gas, <laughs> rent. Persona 5. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I, I, I feel Persona 5's, uh, Persona 5's release this summer is a huge deal. It is, they, right now Atlas is essentially on a ridiculously good streak yes. in terms of being successful, in terms of making a good RPG. Now, though I know that JRPGs don't necessarily uh, push to the amount of units, the normal sales of JRPGs even, isn't even a million units. That is actually rare for most JRPGs to push. Only the top of the top, last generation, Lost Odyssey, I don't even think, pushed a million I units. I don't think so. Bravely Default pushed about 1.5 to 2 million units. And the second or third biggest 
that isn't one of the major Final Fantasies or Pokemons was Nino Kuni 1 pushed about a million point one units. Yeah. So it's like, they're not pushing big units to, to begin with. But Persona was able to with 4. 4 sold 3.7 million units. Half of the entire Persona series was sold with all the copies of Persona 4. So them making multiple versions of Persona 5 uh, clearly is going to pay dividends for them in terms of getting huge sales for Persona 5. I see Persona 5. It's not going to do Final Fantasy numbers because nothing is going to do Final Fantasy oh, numbers. absolutely. Except Pokemon I mean, it, and Final it, Fantasies. It, it, so, it's <laughs> like, so it's like, realistically, nothing is doing those numbers but them. But I see Persona 5 legitimately not lying to you. Four to five million units in its lifetime. Only yes. because it justifies it if you consider Persona 4 across PSN, across PlayStation 2, and across PS Vita was able to sell 3.7. If Persona 4 could sell 3.7, Persona 5 could sell more units. Yes. Because though lots of people might have played that game, I'm, I assure you more people are buying the next one because we, we don't, like I always say about the GTA theory of that 16 million people, 20 plus million people bought San Andreas, yet by the end of the like the year and a half of GTA 5's release, the shit sold 35 million units. As if to suggest, you may have the numbers of what it sold. You don't have the numbers of everyone who played it. Yes. So we don't know how many people, after the fact, played Persona 4. That number could be higher than clearly of what it sold. Because you and I both borrow games from each other. We've always let other people Absolutely. borrow our games. And so that number is higher than what we know it is to be. Consider consider I bought Adam Adam Dead Space. He yes. bought Dead Space. I, bought, I, I, well, I think I bought him. He bought Dead Space 2. He bought Dead Space 3. Mm -hmm. So it's like... If I'm buying him these games and he's buying him the rest on his own, he doesn't count towards that number of the people who originally purchased that game. Yes. So I believe it's feasible for Persona 5 to get 4 to 5 million units in mm. the year of its release Absolutely. or in its lifetime of sales to get 5 million units. I mean, which is huge because what it means is that Atlas will be, they will be climbing the charts of the big boys. They yes. are no longer right the norm of RPG sales. And they deserve they every little bit of it. They are absurd of They, they deserve, are, yes, they, they deserve, deserve every it. single bit of it because, I mean, because when you look at the quality that goes into Persona 3 and Persona 4. Oh, they're just, they're just fucking instant. Sleeper. They are instant classics, man. Sleeper hit. Easily. When I tell you it's a sleeper hit, somebody need to tell you. Like, when I tell you Final game, Fantasy but... X is my favorite game of all time, well, my second favorite game of all sleeper. time is Easy Persona 4 because it's just that fucking, that fucking game is easily just, it's a beautiful concoction of RPG bliss. Don't sleep bliss. on it. Don't sleep on it's it. It's so Don't good. Don't sleep on it, And people. Persona 5 just promises more of Don't the same sleep success. sleep on it. If you guys are curious about how great Persona 3 and 4 are, you please, get a PlayStation 3, get a PlayStation 2, buy that shit off of PSN, or if you have a PlayStation Vita, go ahead and download Persona 3, mm -hmm. download Persona like Golden. Please, I just recommend I mean, you once, play these games I'm sure. I'm sure once PS4 starts... Five. I'm sure once PS4 starts doing their PS2 emulation, it's gonna be it's gonna pop up there. Yeah, it's, it's probably Atlas is probably gonna do that. Absolutely. So like, what, once, it, once it start getting shit. that shit going, getting that shit that ship rolling, it's gonna pop Actually, up on I, there. I never thought of Buy that, that yeah. shit there too, because it's, it's, they're, they're it's definitely worth a play. Because especially since person once Persona Five starts coming out, they're gonna put that shit down there, oh, yeah. so you can see. And it's just oh my and god. And this and this game is like what's crazy about it. And like uh, like when I tell you like Persona, it's like it started a phenomenon. When you look at like. The fighting games that came out, the dance game that came out, they, Persona oh, Four has yeah. its own anime. Like the phenomenon that just like created from these stories and these characters is just like, it's it's mind blowing. Atlas it's looking to get everywhere me. deserving. And like, I haven't watched the Persona Four anime, but when I tell you like I really want to watch it because that's how much I fucking love this oh, series. Yeah. It's just that fucking good. Like I want to see this so, shit. It's like well Sega, well Sega anyway. Sega is looking to get paid, and I think it's going to be a good idea that they bring this this game to more platforms. Absolutely. I'm hoping that it makes its way to PC only because Sega has been being very PC centric. So I'm hoping that it makes its way to PC to possibly help boost the sales and boost recognition because other Japanese RPG titles have been doing well there. Sega has like people that know how to transition those games over to that uh, platform. So I really, 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 really think they should seek to do that because I believe that this title, it, I, I believe that the title combined should not be selling 3.7. I believe it could be hitting five to six. Because mm -hmm. I believe it's it's near that level. I'm not trying to tell you it's like 10 million or it's nothing like 10, 12 or like Final Fantasy 13 numbers because the name doesn't command that. Yes. I'm really saying that the name probably can, if not now, clearly soon. Because consider that people are buying this game and it's a fucking PlayStation 2 game. Yes. I want to make stress to you guys. 
If you play Persona 3 or 4, remind yourself that you're playing a PlayStation 2 game. These games released 2007, 2009. They, are, they released on the PlayStation 2. They're PlayStation 2 games that you're playing. Now, if these games are looking like this and they're, you know, banking years after, you know, other new platforms release, and they're banking 3.7 million units on, you know, Vita and PlayStation 3 off of, off of the when it was ported, clearly bringing up to date on PlayStation 3 is going to bring them higher than that. I'm okay with that the game is essentially clearly a PlayStation 3 game just ported to the PlayStation 4 because I don't see any type of graphical advantages it to say otherwise. Um, but, to me, it, does, it, it doesn't it, really matter. Yeah, and it all, doesn't. All it because, comes down because to is the fucking, this game is going to be it, incredible like, when it comes out and everyone's going to play it. They did their best with Persona 3 and 4 on the hardware that they're given and the game looks fucking fantastic. On hardware PlayStation 3, see, they're going to do just thing as is, good. Not, so only does it, not only does it look fucking fantastic... Oh. It plays fucking uh, fantastic, and the amount of content that you get inside uh, that game yeah. is fucking ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, through a high, it's through a ridiculously high caliber in terms of good voice acting, in terms of good art direction. The presentation is easily one of the greatest presentations Absolutely. of Japanese RPG, period. The only game that even comes close in terms of presentation would probably be the Gran Turismo series. In terms of the menu setup, in yes. terms of the music they got in the background, in terms of how they designed See, that's another thing. Like, that's one thing, man. Both, they, it is... One thing about, you guys say about those games, like, those fucking... You don't understand. The music in this game, Woo! it just... <laughs> you it, don't understand. It pushes forth a style... Woo! That like it, it's just beyond compare. It's the just music like I hear final, like when I hear these games, especially Persona Three and Persona I'm Four. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Could have been an album with the software. <laughs> it, dude, I have those. It's, it's I a, have the fucking soundtracks of both of those Ooh. games. But like, what it is, I feel like, especially because like in especially in Persona Three, because your your protagonist is wearing headphones the entire time. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like when, while you're playing these games, like. That's the music he's listening That's to. That's actually how I feel. That's how I feel when I'm playing this game. Like, this, the kind, this is just the kind of music he's listening to while he's going through all these adventures. That is just what it is. So yeah. he's like, he's got his headphones in and you're just hearing what he's hearing. And it's it just so makes sense. Japanese. It feels good. <laughs> it feels great. Like, it matches the, the tone of what's happening. But at the same time, it feels like someone in a modern day Japanese, mm -hmm. you know, youth setting would be listening yeah. to. And it just, it fits... It like it matches the tone. It's just it's just perfect. They, they, it's so in, well in, crafted. It's in the fun. high in the highest respect and highest regard, they take the crafting of all the other elements of of the actual game that assist in giving you that feeling, that culture. They take it to such a high degree in terms of the the everything culturally yes. easily. In terms of the clothes, in terms of the food that's in the game, in terms of how they talk, in terms of everything. In terms of how they live their lives. It is so huge. And we're, it's like, it's something that's difficult to explain to somebody who has not played a Persona game. You just gotta play one of their games yes. to understand what we're talking about. Because when you play this game, you'll understand why people are talking about it, to, are holding it to such a high regard in terms of how well it's presented, in terms of the music, in terms of the menu system, in terms of the whole anime-like cutscenes. In terms of everything, you fucking feel like you're watching and playing a real life anime. It just works. Not just in terms of how it looks, in terms of the narrative. The yes. narrative is about the teens. The teens have yes. the love drama going on. And the they teens the love cool their stories. animes. It's all awesome. So it they just, have their fucking, cool stories going on between the side quest stuff. It's amazing. It works on so many freaking levels. That and this it, is it, just expanding. It's like vomit inducing how fucking oh, amazing yeah. those games are. So it's like five. So to see, yeah, exactly. To see five. Ooh, follow in like another. that same that it seems like it's following that same it line is of, I mean from what I've seen it's like you have all the elements that we have from 4 huger bigger it's exactly. like the idea of that it's no longer just a, okay a, a small little scene of like a train going around before you go out of the fucking station place it's you inside of the subway you yes. now see him in 3D in full rendered inside the subway you see him leaving the subway going to his classes you see him walking to all this happening in real mm. time Versus where we had it where, prior to where it was essentially just Which a is scene. amazing because like what it seems like, especially like from what I've seen with Persona 5 trailers, I'm getting it hot. seems like, you know, you always, have, you always have your school business and you have your work, oh, you have your, yeah. your job business and saving the world type shit. Which is what Persona 3 and Persona 4 exemplify. Yep. Whereas in Persona 5, like, it almost seems like there's like a third facet to all that shit because like this almost like, this like thief mechanic. I don't like, I, this is what I see. Like, it's almost like this like, 
thief mechanic too. I don't know if like you're actually a thief because you wear like these like crazy. I, masks. I, I think it's essentially. I think he doesn't know he's a thief, and I think the persona inside him is the thief. Maybe it could be because maybe he's doing these things reluctantly. It, it could be like he like because he wears like this whole thief mask thing, and he's doing all this crazy shit. He's, like he's hopping on like banisters and shit, and he's what like if he can't trying to be like super that? stealthy and shit. Oh, Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what the <laughs> fuck is going on? But it seems like. They're adding another layer on it, and it's just exciting, and I can't wait. I can't wait. And this game's going to be amazing. I am too hot. Weather system. <laughs> weather system. Oh, I'm going to leave you. Granted, weather there's, a weather system. System. there's a weather system in 4, but I don't think it's nearly as pronounced as it's going to be in 5. Because it's like the way you weather's travel. Like what, the weather in 4 is basically like the sunset in, five, in 3. Oh, That's I all it is. Like so weather I, I, in, in 4 was like, oh man, the full moon's coming up. It's like 4 is like, oh man, there's a fog coming in. Oh, that's, all, yeah. that's the only difference. So I, I, I'm hoping, um, and, and before we um, you know, ended off talking about Persona 5, before we move on to a little tidbits of the rest of the really Megaton games coming out this year, yeah. I would just like to say, what do you feel regarding Persona 5? Mm-hmm. What do you feel about them making a Persona 6 on the same platform? Would you want them to, to, to spend the time to make the jump? Because Persona 3 and 4, you know, both made in PS2, mm-hmm. ported elsewhere. Would you would you essentially want them, or would you be fine with them if, let's say, if I tell you in two years you're going to get um, Persona 6 on the same platform, let's say PlayStation 3 again, mm-hmm. which is feasible if you consider, like, ending of 2006, you get PlayStation 3. See, and Persona comes out literally three years after that system's release in terms of four. So it's like you would have to say, like, would you be fine with in the next like you know year or two years you get Persona Six if it's on the same platform? Honestly, yes. This guy. I- I'm gonna say yes for the sole fact that just look at Persona Three and Four. Mm-hmm. Persona Three and Persona Three. They were able PS2, to survive. Two and then PS- Persona Four. Persona Four literally came out about almost. Almost a year into the PS3's lifespan, Persona 4 comes out on PS2. And that game was a fucking masterpiece. That game was fucking amazing. It might have been further than that. It might have been like several it, it years. Was, it, was a, it was a little... It was a good ways into the PlayStation it was, 3's it was lifespan. Like, I, I, to my understanding, like we had lots of games there was a, coming out. Like, yes, there was, was a lot like, of games coming out for the it PS3. Was out about. But PS3 was well into its lifespan, and Persona 4 comes out on the PlayStation 2. And puts out such an exemplary product. It and lived. when you look at something like when you look at something now, like especially like Persona Five, where it's very feasible that it was planned for PlayStation Three, and it's now just being moved onto the PlayStation that, that's, Four. That's how to I, say, to that's say how that, I like, believe. Yeah, because to say that like I they can like now like pull like the, take the full use of the PlayStation Four hardware and make a Persona Five out of it. Or you mean Persona Six? Persona Six. Yes, I'm sorry. Good. I'm sorry. Persona Six to make a Persona Six out of it. To me, like, that's more than okay. Like, please, like, go on. Like, any more Persona I can get, I will fucking gobble that shit up because it's just, yeah, it, right. it hasn't disappointed me yet. It was about two years in. Yeah. Like, see, even, it even more two, so than was, I gave it credit for. It was two years in. Even more so than I gave it credit for. It was so far into the PlayStation 3's lifespan that, like, it's other arrived. great games were coming out, yep. but Persona 4 came out on the PlayStation 2 and still put out yeah. so I, a brilliant product and sold how much you had said before? It like, was like 3.7. Exactly. Like, it was 3.7 after all the other ports and after all the other versions. But still, that's, that's, that's still a, a lot though. That's still and, a lot considering how far along mm-hmm. the PS2 was technically dead. Yes. Like, and so it's like, I, I feel they could do a good job if they do it again on, on, on 3. Yes. I, I feel that, even though I'm just asking you that as a simple hypothetical, yes. I will say, because of technical reasons, I think it's very, very likely you're going to see Persona 6 release on PlayStation 4 as a PlayStation 4 game. Reasons, yes. easier development. It's probably why you're even seeing this being made simultaneously on both platforms, is the ease of development now. It's much easier for them. Mm-hmm. So more than before, ps 3 was so more difficult and PlayStation 2 had so yeah, many I mean, we everyone knows that. It was just like, you know. Everyone knows how hard it was to develop for PS3. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was, I could see how why they did that twice uh, in terms of development. Um, let's go down on the list in terms yeah. of what we are I mean, excited we... for. There, there, we there's have so, a lot there's of games. so many games to talk about. There are so many games. We will uh, like, like, wait, we'll skim through some. We'll yeah, highlight let, the ones let, we want to talk about the I'll, most. I just want to touch. I just want to touch a little bit because I don't think there's that much to talk about with this game with Nino Kuni too. Oh yeah, Nino Kuni. Mean, there's really not that much to talk about, but I mean, it's still want, worth mentioning. You want Nino? Well, tell me what you're talking about the dragon thing. You and I were talking about this. You didn't know what the fuck was going on. 
with this dragon oh, thing that was out there, and then this kid wanted to become a king of the Momotos. See, it, it's... It was either the king of the Momotos or king of the pirates. I'm going to be dragon. Two. I'm going to be king. <laughs> no, it's just... Yes. No, this is like, um... To me, like, one of the best facets of the original Nino Kuni was what they didn't touch on enough was the traveling back and forth between the two worlds, between our world and this fantasy world. And sure, they didn't do it, like, they didn't do it as well as I wanted them to in Nino Kuni. And maybe they noticed that, and that's why they're focusing so much on the fantasy world now. Because you don't see oh, any really? you don't see any of the real world in Nino Kuni 2, especially in the trailer we've got. You don't really see too much, if at all. I'm not even sure if you see any of it at all. Like, I'm trying to recall the trailer, and I don't remember seeing any of, like, the real world. Because it seems like it's all about, like, this guy from, like, the fantasy world. Yeah, because I was going to say, it seems what like they they're not the, doing the whole, like, yeah, the, thing the back that. And I, I would have thought that would have been a big deal to show. It to seems me, like I, think world... it, I thought it would have been, too, because it was, a big, it was a big part of the first story. So this world is, like, this game is essentially looks like the entire world is just about the yeah, middle and of the that's, king. Yeah, and that's a little bit disappointing. But at the same time, like, it's Nino Kuni, man. Nino like, Kuni? It's, it's fucking the Studio Ghibli animation. With the level five game design, and it's so just like you feel that you need to see more information on Nino Kuni two to have I would like love a to see, deeper one, or like, I would like, like you already sold the before. Info. Before I give too much of a fuck about it, I want to see more because mm-hmm. again, my thoughts about the Nino Kuni story are coming soon. Ah uh, yeah, and my Nino thoughts about Kunis. the story are typically you know me. My thoughts about a story are pretty much like almost in line. It's hard to say that like I have bad thoughts about a game story and bad thoughts about a game's gameplay like they're usually coinciding like with one another one. i mean I, I understand that only based on how i feel about final yeah, fantasy it, 5 it's hard to see yeah. so i, I, mean, I understand there, there that are that games that are like man i hate this story but oh, i love sorry. this gameplay but like they're very few and far between but like like i will talk like i'm gonna be talking about a little bit about how i feel about the game's gameplay in general but like as far as like the story is concerned, I'll, I'll get into that once my show comes out. It's coming out this year, y'all. I swear to God. 2016. 2016. Kid, well, I'm not even sure what I'm going to call it. But it's coming. <laughs> but I'm going to tell them it's called The Corner. <laughs> the <laughs> Don't call, yeah, I'm not calling it The Corner. Ah, damn but, it. Um, yeah, like, I'm concerned about the fact that it's not talking about the other world. But it's like, and maybe they felt like they didn't have enough information on the other world and feels like maybe they want to focus and, on the yield and maybe everyone And it that. really sucks because like to me that was the most interesting part You're of Nino Kuni. You're a liar. Kuni. You're a god. <laughs> it sucks because that's the most interesting part of Nino Kuni. So like until I get more information about what Nino Kuni's about, Nino Kuni 2 is about, it's hard for me to say whether or not I'm excited. Like I'm excited for the gameplay because the game, game's so fun to play. Mm-hmm. It's a fun game to play, a good action RPG with like Pokemon-esque elements, okay. I guess you can say. But, like, even then, I'm still waiting to see more about it. Oh, we'll wait till we see some more stuff uh, later this year when they talk about it some more. Yes. Title that is coming out literally in one month in Japan. Yes. Sensuna of Sacrifice and Snow. Name is a mouthful. So, this game <laughs> That's pretty much all Japanese games. All though. of the vapors. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about this game. Um... Well, you don't know when it's coming out to the West. My assumption might actually be later this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really excited about this game. I want to see more of it, like next month see, when it releases. I'll you know catch some like videos. What makes me excited about this game is because that combat. Though. I don't see you don't see turn based RPGing anymore. I and mean, sure, I'm yeah, sure yeah, you'll see it from some scenes, but I I think you don't so you don't, it's, it's a, you don't see it from some studios anymore. You don't see it from most people anymore. You, it, it's fall. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Sure. It's falling out of style, and hey, oh, Craig, get with the times, man. God it's all about turn. action RPGs, and that's fine. I can tell you. Off. That's fine. Like, even Final Fantasy VII's turning into an action RPG, and that's fine. Go for it. If that's what's popular, if that's what sells, get that shit done. Make your money. But, as far as I'm concerned, some of the best RPGs I have played in recent memories have been Child of Light. I'm sure I'll love Bravery Default once I play it. So good. But like games like that, like the turn-based RPGs, I miss that and I want that to come yeah, back. So I, when I saw Project Setsuna, like excite, excitement, like tears, 
Oh, yeah. Literal tears rolled from my face. I hugged a small child oh, yeah. and whispered in his ear that like everything was going to be okay. I was doing this. The family was so disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter because they understood after they knew. Nah, Greg, we're still going through legal proceedings. Alive, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? But They'll think, understand eventually. <laughs> so uh, I definitely got a counter suit coming up for me for the same reason. So uh, Sentina, very excited about it because of its turn-based nature. It's an yes. isometric view. Yes. It is an RPG to look Look out for it's coming out in Japan. Like, hey, bitches, you like Final Fantasy VI and shit? Guess what? Yes. Project Setsuna is coming. It's like, and we still need to see. Um, damn, what's that game called? It's called like Saga or something. It's like an older turn-based RPG series that Square's bringing back. Um, oh, it's oh. called Saga something. But they're bringing that series back. I don't want to say that turn-based is not still getting that love because you, you, it's, you, it's, you, it's few and far between. You only have a handful of teams that have even went from the turn to action. Where it's like a lot of the teams that have done current base are actually still doing it. You only really have a very small handful. Like, okay, Mo uh, Monolith. Monolith went from doing, ah, um, oh, shit, what was it? They went from doing Xenogears, Xenosaga, to doing Blade and having it be action-based and not, you know, being turn-based anymore in terms of how you play the game. They're one of the few that did that right next to Square, but you still have, okay, the Dragon Quest series still has their turn-based nature of it in terms of the main series. So you still... But in terms of the main series, but like, when was the last time we saw the main series Dragon Quest come I mean, over we, here? I mean, we've yet, to, we've yet to still see one, but regardless, they're still uh, doing it. Yeah, sure, they're still doing it, but I haven't seen it. I don't. I, <laughs> I want it. Like, I need it in my life. I need it in my life. I mean, in like, terms all, of all we get is Dragon it, Quest heroes. Yeah, like, we're, uh, we're not getting the main ones. But what I mean in general of them doing it at all, so I, I, I think that we're still getting some. There's only a few that have always been action that are still action. There are some that have been turn-based that are kind of still turn-based. So um, they're not getting a limelight, but, you know, that's what it is. Project it's Sensuna. A, it's, Project Sensuna is my saving grace. Like, I can't wait for this game for the very, for the mere fact I that... I say we have more saving graces than you think regarding this matter. Um, we will have we to do. talk about we them. Do. We do. We'll we do. To, oh, you'll okay. have to show me because I need them. We're it right now. Guarantee you that Saga game they announced is going to be turn to turn based like the older PS2 PS1 series. I hope so. Um, we have um, oh, what was the title I'm thinking of? Chunace's title, Archive, or I think it's called Archive of Existence or Archive Exit. Archive. You see, I haven't heard any of these games. Oh, like, it, like it's, fucking... it's a game made by the team that essentially made Valkyrie Profile. But they're 2D fucking, game. They're fucking hidden. Right. Though. 2D game. No, I don't. Turn based. Yeah. That's, action. That's Val well, Valkyrie Chronicle. Valkyrie it, Profile. Brock, your profile is turn-based. Yeah, it was turn-based. Turn-based. So you have turn-based game there. Project Sentinel, a turn-based game there. Bravely sequels, Bravely Second That I can't fucking is wait there. for. You Even have I have to play Bravery Default. You have like. Persona 5. I might argue some of the best Japanese RPG games that are coming out yes, this year are turn-based. I will agree with that. But and the only like, action one that we consider, even care to even talk about but consider, let's is Final about, Fantasy XV. Let's, let's think about like that's the only one we even care about. Right? Let's, let's think about like think about how it. many years have gone by without a good turn-based RPG. Like yeah, you play Child of Light, nigga. What are you looking at me for? Yes, like, <laughs> there have been like two within the past like three, four years. Oh my God, Child of Light, there have been like two you good at ones. What you looking at me I love Child of Light. I, I don't want, disagree. I think we're seeing a good resurgence. No, there's, there's a good resurgence. I'm, I'm I, glad. I say, I say we're doing a resurgence of them because Project Sentinel, because Bravely Default One and Two, because of the Saga series and returning, because of because of Exit Archive, because of all these games that are coming out that are turn based. Because of Persona Five, I say yes, we do have a resurgence and of good turn based RPGs. And I think a lot of people love to give the doom and gloom, but really, realistically, to the people who are giving the doom and gloom, about who are the turn-based games? My nigga, are you looking for them? Because they exist. Boys, I hear it's hard. I know. No, I listen, them. niggas, I'm right there with y'all. I'm right there with y'all. That shit's hard, man. Like, it's hard out there. Craig's like, where are them? Looked over the fence. I ain't seen those boys. <laughs> it, it's hard out there, though. What, what? But I get, I get it. Yes, mate. 2016, 2016. maybe my year. It's it may be my I'm year. I'm telling you right now, it will be your year for turn-based RPGs. And so then, go down. then we can do it. We can make it happen. I'm happy. We have so many other titles to talk about. And it's just mega time. We could we could talk about uh, Star Ocean 5 is coming out this year. It's actually That's coming it. out next month. That's Garbage ass not play. It's coming out next month. It's okay game from what I've seen um, from the gameplay I mean, stuff. I'm Star not... Ocean's always been to me mediocre at best. 
Damn, Greg. Whoa, did he just say that? Oh, my God. I said it, though. Fox like, Fox it's always been okay. Fox Hole fans, Fox Hole fans, this nigga don't express their <laughs> understanding and opinions of the Coke. No, but <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with you. express feelings of Craig Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> and says Craig Robinson, he don't really understand. No, I, I think, no. I agree with you. I mean, I mean Starship 5 has, has had, uh, Starship in general yes. has had its, like, hit or misses. Yes. And it's like, I don't know. I'm not. I, I'm I mean, not saying nothing's wrong with this until game. Until the end of time was the best, and even that to me was okay. I feel this is a game that I'm not running out to get to when it comes out. Like, I'll wait for it. If, if it gets good reviews, I might look at it. But uh, until then, like I don't think Be- myself like actually like getting too much like yays for it because of the magnitude of RPGs releasing this year. If this game does come out fall this year in the U.S. and you know and uh, Europe. I don't know how eager I am to jump in day one at this, especially with the magnitude of huge JRPGs releasing this year. Mm-hmm. This is not on the top of my list. Yeah. So, I mean, we're only going to say it about came, Star Trek It came 5. out in a rough... Granted, I was going to say it came out in a rough year, but, like... I did. There have been other RPGs. they got to be stacked. There have been other Star right? Oceans that came out that just, like, they just didn't do well because... They're, they're stacked just... up with too much. So, um, Star Ocean 5... We're not saying a yay or nay. We're just saying for now. It's there. For now, we're, we <laughs> might put it on the back burner of 2017. Yes. So we'll, terms, we'll see. We'll see. In terms of games that Craig and I will mutually play, that we both could agree on, that we played. Yes. Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh, yeah. How are you feeling? Like, 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 I'm looking at that list. Craig's like, like, I wasn't down with that. No, I'm, I'm looking at that list. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? How are you feeling about Mass Effect Andromeda? I feel that it has a lot to live up to. Those boys didn't show shit. EA didn't show shit. It, it has. They're, a lot. they're waiting for that big press conference. Like they need, they need, they need to have a good showing. What me. What is it that you want from Mass Effect to have them show that says seal the deal? This is happening day one for me. Okay. To be because I know you might not have been too fond of three. So I was not too fond of three at all. In regards to what uh, Andromeda needs to fix, what do you think they need to fix to what have they need to fix? They need to have. Here? I need a setup. Because to me, because they're reunite like they're reigniting the series, is gonna be something completely different. You know, it's not a part. It's not about Shepard anymore. About some someone completely different. You're creating a whole new character from what I assume. The setup needs to be right. Like I need to see that trailer and give a fuck. Oh, like man. I need to like see. Oh man, you know the Citadel exploded. And now <laughs> all this shit, all this crazy shit's happening, and I don't know what the fuck's going on. And it's up they to you him like a, to solve the mystery. They describe him as like, like a cowboy or something. Yeah. That is what they're trying. To, it, it, it's like a Hellboy, a cowboy. What oh, the cow- fuck, Greg? I heard Hellboy. I'm sorry. Greg's like, what Nick Nolte got to do with this? I was like, excuse me, what? Greg's like, what Nolte got to do with this? No, I don't even think that's the guy. Yeah, like, cowboy, cowboy would be okay by yeah, that, 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 that's, a, that's a better. I I love the narrative and setup that they're doing with that because I've never essentially cared for the whole oh yeah you're a Spectre bullshit. I actually See, really but like hate that. It, the thing I is, think no, to me, to me. Being a Spectre would have been a good idea if they just followed through with it. It's they did. They horrible. did not follow through it's like, with it. Oh yeah, he's a Spectre, but he's like a lone Spectre, and he's like rogue. Exactly. Like, like he's a Spectre, fuck. but then like immediately like as the game begins, you kind of forget that you're a Spectre. To it begin doesn't with. really matter. You it doesn't it matter at all. So much power from you. So like, like cares, the setup, what the setup was terrible, and then you're just kind of <laughs> you're kind of just going through the game like dealing with shit. Yeah, that it's happens. like I feel like this sort of gets into like strange quest task issues where like some ladies like oh my god save my kid stranger i've never met you before yeah but that's what they were trying to do like oh yeah well he's doing these things because he is blah 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 it's like look if you go and say he's doing these things because he actually wants to do them and he's volunteering to do them it makes sense mm-hmm. but please don't say that this is his job description but he doesn't know how to do said job description i i feel yeah. that the, the lone ranger the ranger stuff makes sense because yes. it harkens to the old it harkens to a smaller concept that we know to a bigger yeah. concept that we don't you, know and when you do the whole the it whole Lone sense. Ranger cowboy thing. You sense. also you also add in that whole the whole morality thing becomes natural, you know. Whereas like you know you can be a Lone Ranger and going around from like you can be like the John Wayne of the Lone Rangers, oh, like, yeah. going around like from city to city helping people doing whatever. Or you can be you know the like quintessential bandit and you're like going from city to city taking fucking shit up. And that's what I want because it's like I've always seen. And I've always seen it, as, and even Star Wars, I've, I've, I've used it an analogy when I wrote like my thesis in film regarding it being more so fantasy. Mm-hmm. I even stated that one could put plaus- put the argument that, that, that Han Solo is more so a cowboy in the respect yes. that he's essentially trying to tame a galaxy that. that has no real law to it currently, but he's doing the right thing, not for pay. 
not because of anything really other than morally wanting to do the right thing. Yes. In this town, there's no law. So he's trying to create that trust and create that law amongst you know people like him. In, and that's the way I sort of want them to take the, the concept of Mass Effect to I say, completely agree. make the main character the cowboy, make what they're trying to do as we know the universe has no centralized law right now. Yes. And you're going from planet to planet. You could do one of two things. You could make them say, trust us, trust N7, trust the Citadel, trust us to be good dudes. And you get everybody giving a fuck about that and say, wow, man, the galaxy is not that bad because here's this son of a bitch giving a fuck about everything. You could do that and still make it open planet, open world, and have yes. him travel in galaxy, planet to planet, galaxy to galaxy, spreading his nice time love. Or you could make him a badass rebel. He doesn't give a fuck. He's Absolutely. a pirate. If Absolutely. you have a ship, he will hijack your ship. He will steal your fucking parts. He'll rape your planet. He <laughs> doesn't give a fuck. Add the morality system and make it really mean something. At the end of this game, you should have it where they're either not that much closer to establishing a real police or they're they're closer to it. They're either like already having it. And at the ending of the game should just be like, here you go, you're gonna be the leader of so and so, you did good. Or the next thing could be we didn't we weren't able to do it because law it's too reckless. Yeah. <laughs> what's gonna happen is they'll just have the ending of the game where it's like, oh you're like the most wanted pirate or something. I'm okay with that. Me too. If they seek to do that, simply because I don't believe Mass Effect should no longer rely on the characters. Mass Effect needs to rely on the universe because at the end of the day, those characters are expendable. They can live or die. They cannot make the entire game, mm -hmm. especially a game that's going to be spanning multiple things. It needs to be about the world. I want your ship to degrade, in terms of gameplay anyway. I want your ship to degrade. I want your crew to need food. I want us to fucking really try to be an RPG because you could still have a good linear narrative, good story, and all these characters while still saying you have to feed your crew, you gotta maintain your ship, you gotta have gas in your ship. Give me a reason to steal shit, damn it. It's hard to want to steal something it when is. they give you a ship and you're fucking invincible, you don't need to sleep. I mean, what the fuck? No, you're right though. So it's like, I feel you could survive in space easy once you become a robot and you guys found some fuel and you don't need to do anything. What problem do y'all have again? It sounds like it's pretty easy to me. You know what? Okay. I'm, I'm hoping that's, that's it with Andromeda. Who knows? I could yeah. be wrong, but I mean, remains to be seen because EA has yet to show us. Yes. 2016 people, these niggas yet to show us big deal. This shit's supposed to come out holiday this year, bro. Uh, I don't know. Like, again, like I'm not like... We're killing them, Chris. I'm, like, I'm not too excited for it. I'll, I'll wait. I'm holding off on my excitement. Yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to get too hyped up for it. It's just whatever. To the right make goes in it. Who cares? The make goes <laughs> in it, so you leave out your excitement for open world. The Mako being in it is enough for me to say I'm holding on to this dream. All right. So can I can I just can I, can I do like a quick rant? Real you time may. About, you may. May, may, may. I talk about a game that I, I really want to talk about? Fuck them boys. And, and a game I'm not sure that I'm not. I'm like it's a game I'm not sure you played yet, or you have any intentions of playing. You may. It's a major big deal. It's a big RPG. I want Strategy to talk RPG. about big deal. XCOM Two. What the fuck, crap Damn it! I thought you were fucking talk about Horizon Zero, but now I'm playing. I knew you were going to go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Holy fucking shit. So, if you have not played XCOM, Enemy Unknown, oh, yeah. Show me that video one of the right best now. one of the best RPGs of 2013. I think it was 2013 it came out. Was it, I could have sworn that game was 2012. Maybe it, it, it could have been 2012. You know, actually, maybe it's 2013. You're it could have been 2012, right? but either 2013 or 2012, it doesn't matter. Good it was game. the best RPG of that year. That game was phenomenal. The, the aspect of you... Creating an army to combat an alien force to go against and just fucking ah uh. strategy RPG yeah strategy R strategy RPGing at its finest like and the fact that you can allocate your own personalities onto every single crew member that you had on board that you would take on missions and they would die and it was permadeath so you like really cared whether or not a certain person lived or oh, died yeah, on these that game where you could like create characters and you could make them like you me oh absolutely i i, I, I made i screen. made you and you were a fucking bitch oh, because God, you would get into a certain situation and you would panic all the fucking time i don't know if i i don't No, that was you though that was you that's how you are that's how you are i don't remember if my character was so or not. so now xcom 2 is coming out and they're taking a delightful, I'm going to say delightful, that's how much I, I enjoy this. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a delightful twist on the formula, whereas... Oh, I was going to ask, what is the twist? Yeah, whereas in the first game, 
aliens had just come to this planet and they were trying to take over and you were just this you know you were a group you were basically earth you represented earth and you don't know what these people are about what these aliens are about how to fight them all you had were your basic guns and you were just shooting at these guys and hoping to god that these bullets would kill them and eventually you, you fought your bigger aliens and you dissected their bodies to learn their weaknesses and all that shit but now in XCOM 2 yeah, you're like Intel guys. consider you lost that war aliens now have planet earth oh what the fuck right aliens now have planet earth and you have this mobile base there is a very small sect of XCOM now living on this planet and you're fighting with everything you have to gain control of the planet back and that's basically the idea behind XCOM 2. That's set up self. It's, it's not cool. It's so going to be bad. And no one's going to care about nothing. Oh, it's so good. It's coming out apparently next month. Yeah, yeah, man. February, man. I'm so excited. I don't know why I thought this game came out fall last year. Last year was yesterday, people. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like... It's so, it's so, so, like, yeah, one month. It's so visceral, man. Like One I, month, like, four days, you will be playing XCOM. It's... The, the amount of customization you get with all these people and now they're going even further with that now you can like change you can like, like your whole base thing you have the whole base like granted they, they took out the base building that XCOM 1 had which was a big facet of it but now you have branching paths you have different missions you can take at different times and the very fact that you're very mobile and like you can't be everywhere at once whereas like you had the entire world that you can span in the first XCOM. You can't be everywhere at once, so of course certain areas are going to fall just like they fell in the first game. So it's just it's just whole very new experience. They have more customizational options. There are more classes you can use now, and which puts seen, a more, like, a more... Uh, I'm just, I'm really yeah, excited for this game, this man. Guy, from what I've seen from... Um, and just when we were talking about that and talked about, talking about turn-based um, RPGs, I mean, come on, bro. Sorry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. To, yeah. To our understanding, XCOM Two is still turn-based. It's yes, it still is. Essentially yes, it is. It's very, turn very. It's super turn-based. So, so stop, it's take your turn. Super turn-based to the point where it's punishing if you fuck up. Oh, type of turn-based, yeah. which is what I loved about it. Like if you, if you end your turn and you're not in a certain type of cover, you fucked up, and that guy is going to die. And if that guy, even if that guy doesn't die, that guy may end up panicking and fuck up your entire mission, which just ends everything. Especially if you've leveled up that dude in a specific oh, class that's extremely necessary. I can't necessary tell time. you how many times Ooh. where, you know, because you have, you have to bring rookies sometimes onto your missions, you know, because you got to level them up. The, the rookies got to go with, like, oh, the more experienced God. guys. So, you know, your more experienced guys are running up in front so the rookie can stay behind, so you can see the guys. They can come into view, and you can sh the rookies can shoot them down and hopefully kill them to level up so they can become a part of the crew. But because you're pushing your your real veterans in the front, and that's that's they they end up dying. That's, and that's, it's that's, like, that's harder on like the people that you have that like are established. It's hard. Because it's like in RTS games, you might have like like company heroes or something. You might but, have like a set of dudes that like they're paratroopers. You might exactly. you fly in like a sniper. Or you could fly in someone that's like anti tank. You could always fly in several no, like units of people. Game, it's like with with enemy unknown. Like the big difference with that is like when they permanently die, they're it's gone. Like you've leveled up the things they could do in their now. And dead. it was for vain. For they're good. gone. So now. you could go multiple so if you, missions with this guy. If you and had he like died for real. you have you always have your group of five. There's always a you always have like your mainstays oh, right yeah. when you play this game. You have your mainstays. These guys are going yeah. in front lines. They're fucking like they. They're fucking veterans. They've killed like 20 <laughs> fucking aliens and shit. They're Kirk's good. Like, Kirk's like, that's my name. And then they fucking right. die. And uh -huh. then they freaking die. And now you have to like bring newbies good. into the fray. Good. It's it's rough, man. And to see what I like about XCOM, the, the second one, I forget. Like it, it may have a subtitle. I'm not sure. But XCOM 2, what I like is that with XCOM Enemy Unknown, there was a... a there were very certain classes, and every class had like their own defined role, which I'm sure they're going to do in XCOM 2, but they're also expanding on it. There's going to be more classes. There's going to be like 
more mixtures of class, like the class that can like heal, but also do like something else. There are more skill, type shit. So like you can be it, there's more shit you can do. So it would really suck in enemy unknown to be like you had a medic. And then they just died, and you no longer had a really good medic anymore. Damn. Oh, and it was Kirk's just like, like well, no, fuck. Oh, Kirk's like, and like, you, you don't choose. Yeah. Whereas, what I do like in X- XCOM 2, they're allowing you to choose what... You're, you're allowed to choose what class they eventually evolve into, which is a benefit you did not have in Enemy Unknown. Oh, yeah. you, you recruited somebody and just hoped to God. That they got the class yeah. that you needed them to be. I was like, we need this bad. So thankfully, thankfully, XCOM Two, they're they're remedying some things. They're like they're making the game better, but like the same, the same urgency and the same, you know, anguish that you get from just playing this game is just going to be there still, and. You're going to have a chance to like sneak up on enemies, whereas you were always on the offensive in, or I'm sorry, you were more on the defensive a lot in XCOM. You know, you're always like creeping up slowly, making sure you don't see the enemy. Whereas XCOM 2, there's going to be a lot of missions where you're actually on the offensive. You're infiltrating bases and you're the one who was actually in camouflage and they don't know that you're actually coming and you can set up certain situations that you can ambush people. Whereas in XCOM, in the original XCOM, you were always on the defensive. You were always creeping up slowly. And when you came into contact with an enemy, you were immediately engaged. Now in this game, you can wait to engage an enemy. You can set up to ambush and make sure that like all your dudes are ready to fucking shoot on some dude who's like completely unsuspecting. It just brings a whole different layer to the game that's just going to make it so good oh, yeah. and I'm sure I'm going to record it so oh, all yeah. of y'all can see and me and your boy time. Edwin are going to be a part of that oh, yeah. my boys Adam and Jason we talk about all, oh, all yeah. the time are going to oh, be a part of that I wanna live. and they're all going to die and oh, it's going to be fantastic damn it, Greg. I, I, uh, so you say you got your turn based games I mean you have this game coming out next month and then you have you know five to six months after that you have Persona 5 coming out um, and I mean, this at is the end of my year, man. At the ending of the year, hopefully, you know, um, um, Sentina of Sacrifice and Sun comes out. And hopefully, also, I don't really know if they'll do Bravely Default or Second in terms of getting ported to platforms. Um, last year or the year prior, um, Square had made interest of wanting to move Bravely Default series to other platforms. I don't know if they'll do all that. Um, and we want to end the podcast talking about a game that is one of the biggest games announced last year. Ooh, with yes. all the fucking megatons that came out last year. Easily one of the biggest games that was announced last year, mm-hmm. Horizon Zero Dawn. So now, Horizon Zero Dawn in terms of RPG-ness. Yeah, what I'm, what I'm concerned be, about, like, how much of an RPG God. is this game? More RPG than I was led to believe. <laughs> so this game... Because <laughs> yeah, we put that on the list, I'm like, is that really an RPG or is that just an action game? From, but explain from, to me. From what I've read, and I don't have to specifically look up what they've stated regarding it, the, right. the, the looting aspect of it, it's like, it takes from so many different RPGs, uh, uh, clearly, the setting of it is very post-apocalyptic. The setting is semi-fallout. <laughs> mech semi- dinosaur. That's all you. Mech dinosaur. All I gotta say is mech dinosaur, uh, yeah, and I you would, can say absolutely, please God, yes. I, I would say. I would say, if anything, it's post-apocalyptic in the same respect that sort of Fallout is in terms of something happened to mankind, and we don't know what the thing is that happened, and it's sort of part of the fun. And you're sort of dealing with the world that exists today, regardless of what happens to said world. Okay. So I, I definitely like to see what they continue on doing in terms of RPG. We didn't hear about more of the RPG features until later on. So there's a really interesting um, interview of one of the directors from Guerrilla Games okay. talking about the game in terms of looting. So when they showed the game at, at the Paris Game Show event, or actually it might have been somewhere, it might have been a Tokyo Game Show because I know they were there too. When they show this game in Tokyo, they show uh, essentially the the characters looting some of the actual content in the actual game. So it shows him talking about crafting, talking about looting, talking about different levels that you're not you're going to be basically bare when the game actually starts off. So he makes a, a, a big use of, of telling you that you start off one way, but you turn into something else. At first, when this game was first shown, and when I first heard about this game, when it was sort of leaked about it. You sort of in your mind, because it's Guerrilla Games, you're thinking action, That's you're what thinking it seemed like possibly, to me. you know, other stuff. But when when I first heard about this game, before we ever saw the story or it leaked, all we heard was they're working on an open world RPG. 
the concept art only showed, you know, some dinosaur shit going on. And even after the concept art leak, even after the reveal trailer, it's almost as if that essentially escapes you because you're not you're not used to putting the team the words RPG with this team. Yes. It's like what you when you hear of Bavesta's making a new game, you already yeah, implanted it's RPG, an RPG into yeah, it. it's gonna be an RPG. Bioware, Bavesta, any of those teams, CD Project Red, you've already interjected RPG when yes. they said they're gonna create a game. Because of this, even after the leaks were telling us it was an RPG, it was almost as if I was putting it on the back burner of not being an RPG, if not completely forgot that that's what was leaked. Right. So when they first showed the game, showed the dinosaur stuff, oh, kid, kid, he's <laughs> the dinosaur, kid. So when they oh, first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when first <laughs> shows are beating the shit out of like that mech T-Rex thing, you're almost completely escaping what was leaked before. The only thing that, that's the biggest thing I think that many people remember from those leaks was open world mech dinosaurs and it almost sounded like so fake like this can't be a real yeah. thing. So I, I think that the post-apocalyptic brave chick fighting, uh, yeah. fighting mech dinosaurs I think in a forest setting is like... Mm. I, I think the, the biggest thing with Horizon Zero Dawn is that its initial release of them not necessarily talking about it as much is what's making people not see it that way. Because if this was another team, you wouldn't really need to ask about RPG elements. Consider, okay, let's say, um, oh, here's a great difference. Um, um, that one game, Naho, that they reshot at Tokyo Game Show. Right. Now they're showing, he's the sort of guy actually sort of looks like Geralt. Uh, but <laughs> but he, it, the game's showing all this action-y stuff. It's showing him with all these different weapons. And it's showing him kicking him a whole bunch of ass. Now, if I were to say, oh, yeah, this is a new game by Namco Bandai. It's a game that was in development from 2005, and Team Ninja's, you know, taking it over, and they're making it do whatever, whatever, whatever. If I were to tell you this, you're not going to say, oh, oh, it's an RPG. You're not going to think that. But mm -hmm. let's be real. In the first trailer stuff that you see of The Witcher, the first gameplay stuff, you see him hacking and slashing and beating the shit out of people with all different types of weaponry. Could one not come to the conclusion if you never heard it was an RPG? That maybe it's not. So right. I feel that because of the pedigree of the team and because the team does not have a history of it, people do not see the game as that because yes. they don't put the Derrick's RPG with the team's name. Again, when we put this game on the list of talking about RPGs, I was like, how is this an RPG? Because I needed to from remember my very, that this from my game very, was an RPG. <laughs> from my very first instinct, it, it seems like an action game. It does seem like an action game, but it can very well be an action RPG. I just don't know too much about it. Uh, only because it, it's like what they talked about regarding that in mm. terms of, of when it was actually first announced. Yes. I was trying to see of if they call it that, and they, they outright do call it a, a RPG when it was first first announced so sure. I didn't want anyone to get confused about if it was a hybrid of both because what the team is talking about sounds like they're gearing towards RPG that they were never making it anything right. else consider yeah, there's even looking at it now I'm looking at like what the, the the genre, genres like it's always saying role-playing game first yeah it's like they, like, they it's saying it's an, it's an adventure game as well action adventure game but like more prevalent it's yes like, yeah, because, action role playing yes because 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 one could, could could one could argue this about final fantasy 15 one could argue this even about uh, truthfully they could argue it about the witcher and that game one oh, game absolutely. of the year last year uh, by a lot of publications so the reality is i mean many would call it an rpg because of what you do in the game it doesn't matter how you're playing the game in general the reality is you have a skill tree these things matter to you in terms of level up it's built by quest and you truthfully do go from one level to another that actually matters in terms of building the role of the character it's enough to say yeah rpg them solidifying it i think more so is is them getting the fallout writers and getting the witcher you know developers on board to assist them with this so they got one of the lead writers of fallout new vegas on top of getting um, some of the, the developers from CD Projekt Red to assist them in this development. So uh, don't worry, you got people who know RPG shit that are on board working on this game. And I know that's the biggest thing that people might be worried about is that the people working on the game don't have a history of doing it. So, you know, maybe they can't. But the fact that they even look to get outside help from other teams that had better history. Also, we don't even have a full list of everyone that's not working at Guerrilla Games. So for all we know, four years ago when they originally started working on this game, all the way to 2011, we're technically going to be five. When they were originally working on this title, clearly they had to have hired a massive amount of help to make them build that respectable skill tree. Yes. So I'm excited just based on the possibilities of having an open world game that is a RPG with quests, with looting, in such a strange concept. Because I, I'm more interested about what I do by myself to create my own personal narrative, 
Craig's more about the narrative that is told to you in the literal format in terms yes. of the story. <laughs> what do you think about the story and the narrative that's trying to be told through this game? See, that's still, to me, it's still up in the air. Especially when she's talking about I mean, this world. It's, she it's discusses very... like this is, a, this is a world. She talks about something happened that caused yeah. these machines, but they don't know. It's and almost that's... like it's so into the future that it's the lore of how the world like, is, it's is very... told through like stories. They don't really know. Like, it's very interesting because like... It's not really, like, a setting you get too often. So, like, when you say, like, when people talk to me, like, oh, man, I'm making a... I think about it, you don't really. Like, I'm, I'm talking about, like, people I like say, like, oh, we're going to make a post, post-apocalyptic post world. The last thing you think about is dinosaurs, oh, right? Yeah. So, like, to say, like, oh, yeah, we have, like, these crazy mech dinosaurs and something happened and now that these things are just here... And in order to survive, we have to hunt them, we have to track them, and we have to kill them. Like, to me, that, that opens up an entire world. I forgot about the tracking stuff. Yeah, like, you have to track them, those shits down. You have to, like, find them and where they where they stay at, and yeah. then you can fucking hit them. So, like, it's, it's really interesting. Cause I, I'd really love to see, like, where this story might go. And, I, and I'm all for female protagonists, too, so, like, thumbs uh, up there. Yeah, boobies. <laughs> oh, damn it. Craig's setting us up, bro. I'm setting us down. Yeah, just... just we're already knocking them down. We're like, uh, beginning of this like, podcast, oh, man, we I'm talked all, about, all about progressivism. He's just like, we, nope, we talked, them titties. We, we talked about baby rape. We talked about <laughs> Jews. Oh, we man. are too far gone. Oh, this, is, this, is, this is just 2016 in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see like where this may go. And I'm also uh, happy cause, about Especially because, like, I mean, I don't... What's really good, what really gets me excited is the fact that I don't know where it's going to go. I mean... Like, whereas a lot of stories you, you can watch... Like, I can watch, like, a Final Fantasy fifteen trailer and get, like, yeah, and kind talk, of the gist oh, of where they about, might be we going. We talked about that in the respect that it's exactly. like, we already like, know Like, we kind of know going. where it's going. Is this going to be the classic it, Dances with Wolves where it's like, exactly. oh, man, I really exactly. it's, it, really it's a very... It inside. seems like a very classic setup. I where changed something, my mind now. Where it's something... not going to be bad anymore. <laughs> That's what they're going to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Whereas something is like Horizon, I don't know where the fuck oh, they're going. It's like it's, it's so sh- out there and so you, different that like I'm not really sure where they it's can going. Go so many directions, and they give you all these different hints. They they talk about the 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 possible. They let you know that you're not even the only tribe. They say yes. tribes with a plural. Like you're not even the only tribe. So that could be war. Are you tribes. friends with these tribes? Exactly. So are you enemies with these tribes? What are your histories with con- these people? Considering the tech, t- the, the technological. How close are you with your own tribe? Exactly. It's like <laughs> considering the technological disadvantage that they're essentially at because of what happens after this fall. It's like you would also want to know. Okay, what's what's old technology to them and what's new? Mm-hmm. So it's like I want to know. What is the misconception that they've gotten regarding this world that they now live in in comparison to what we know of that world for real? One of the fun, greatest things about Fallout is the idea that certain people have these weird concepts in the game about what they believe the world really was like pre-war. So it's so funny to sort of either see people talk about it or see people have like the, the, the pre-war suits or the pre-war money. And they and it's funny to sort of see the, the game almost poke jokes at it as if to say this person believes that this was a this sport wasn't really that big of a deal or they believe that this was how this was really done in reality right. you know that that's not true so something sort of fun about that playing with that history or playing what they don't know I want to see more of that in this game. I want to know what is it that is so normal to us that they're going to see as just the weirdest right. sorcery type thing because of where they live at. So I love that they make a point that they're so far into the future after this collapse that it's not even a written history. It is a very oral history between these tribes telling each other this. Mm-hmm. So you get the sense of, in terms of it, the idea that it is a human thing between one another and it's not necessarily this huge, deeply advanced political tech thing going on. They haven't understood what it is. It's just now set mankind back to the Stone Age. So I love the understanding of that, that you could still have the bow, composite bows, and all the other high-tech stuff only on the animals, but I like that there are real animals to capture for her to eat. I like that there are real things for her to do with other animals and other things Mm -hmm. that exist in the game, but I also like that they are still hunters gatherers. They've reverted back to the thing that's keeping right. them alive, and that what they knew before doesn't help them in this new future. Now all of that 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 history is lost. 
I want to see that play forward into this game because if they maintained it, it would hurt the game because now you're playing a game where everyone knows how it used to be. If yeah, everyone knows you, I think that it hurts the fun. That's boring. It hurts boring and it hurts the fun. I want to see how these motherfuckers get used to this shit. Exactly. What did they interpret what the real world was like 200 mm-hmm. or whatever 100 years prior to this game is? So this is it, – it's un, it's uncanny for me for us to end a podcast off on such a huge game to say that this is one of the biggest games and we're putting this next to the Final Fantasy in terms of one of the biggest RPGs this right. year is weird. This is one of the biggest, I would say, not coming from a Japanese studio. And it's hard to say that about a team that doesn't even have a history of making this content. Yes. But if they got the people on board and involved and if Sony gave them clearly enough funding and direction to allow them to make this for four years in secret... Clearly, there's something they like to say that this is a franchise and there will be more titles. There's something they liked about it to be that. And that's something Sony Stable has been missing for a long time. Has been a homemade, IP-owned RPG. Absolutely. They haven't had this shit since that Ark the Lad title. They haven't even had this since titles like Rogue Galaxy or even White Knight Chronicles. Horrible game, by the horrible way. Horrible game. Horrible game. That's so, another game I'll be covering. Horrible game. Oh. Sadly, Chris. Oh, god that. damn it. That was a failure. Anyway. We're, we're happy that... Let's move on. We're I'm, happy, I'm, we're happy, I'm getting sick talking about it. We're happy that that horrible game did not put Sony on for making another RPG. <laughs> Sony, Sony was probably just came off White Knight Chronicles 2. And then Gorilla Games is like, Sony, oh my god. We got this idea. White Knight, White Knight, <laughs> White Knight Chronicles <laughs> are so bad that like the only way we can sell White Knight Chronicles two is if we also package in White Knight Chronicles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be like, we got this idea about this RPG. They're gonna like, get away from us. We just got shit with White Knight Chronicles. So <laughs> it's like, I'm excited about it. I think this is a big deal no, for absolutely. the company. I think it's a big deal for gaming to have another Western RPG that is not being done by Bioware or Bethesda or any of the, the leaders of the Western yes. RPGs. Uh, it's time that we get some new blood in there to force the hell out of everybody else mm-hmm. to get to the ways. Get I'm that good to... shit. No, it's going to be a great fucking year, man. I'm really excited for 2016. There's so many good things happening the in terms is. of the RPG and the story crafting and of all these worlds. We're only talking excited. about RPGs. We're exactly. Gonna go, we're going to so go poor this year. We're only talking about RPGs. Exactly. There's so many. There's so much more we can talk about, but like, we just touched on RPGs because it, it was enough. We're going to go poor this year. It's a simple fact. <laughs> poor. There'll be. A, there is going to be plenty of content on this, oh, on there's, this channel there's definitely, there's for this, be, this year. There's going to be so much content. We're planning to put that GoFundMe. All right. <laughs> we need that shit to pay the bills because the Absolutely. games that are coming out are you, all you need. I, I put easily 300. If there's not near so 400, much shit to do. 300 to 400 on games just this year. I'm exceeding and that we next will, year. And we will try our best oh, to give you no. all of that shit as fast as we possibly we can. We haven't even discussed. As of yet, how we're going to do this here mm-hmm. in regards to the layouts of what games we will cover, what games we won't cover. That's, we've got to even go over that. It's, that, a, it's, a, it's a huge year. There's, uh, there's so much content that we still have to sort of zigzag and go back and forth on what absolutely. we're going to play but, and what we're not going to But play. at the very least, it's it's exciting, man. I'm, I'm super excited for it, as I'm sure the rest of you are, too. Oh, yeah. So with that said, that being this said, is a great, great podcast. Episode 15 this is your boy, Craig. It's your boy, Ed. Closing it out, 2016, good year. And this is what it is.